Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about recording and mixing an acoustic guitar. You're probably already asking the question, if you're going to talk about acoustic guitars, why are you holding an electric guitar? Well, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the Line 6 Variax uh, guitar, specifically the acoustic models. So this is an electric guitar, but it has some very special pickups on it and some digital signal processing that goes on inside that takes the sound of the guitar it makes it sound like an acoustic guitar. So let me just show you uh, quickly what it might sound like. So sort of sounds like an acoustic guitar, right? In previous videos, uh, I've shown how to record a, a typical acoustic guitar. So I used the Martin guitar, I used some microphones, and show you how you might record it, uh, a regular acoustic guitar, and then also how you might mix it inside of Pro Tools. Well, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how you might uh, record the Line 6 Variax guitar to get some pretty good acoustic guitar sounds for your recordings. Now, uh, I, you know, I know that there are people that don't like modeling in general. That just don't like uh, anything that has to do with modeling, whether it be modeling an, an acoustic guitar or electric guitar, or also modeling guitar amps. I think that's fine. I think everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Um, with that being said, though, I think if you haven't uh, heard the Variax guitar before, um, take a second, and before you move on to the next video inside of YouTube, at least listen to maybe later on in the video where I've got the Variax recorded, and give you an idea about, you know, hey, this doesn't actually sound so bad. I was surprised myself the first time I tried the Variax guitar. I was like, this is uh, a lot better than I was expecting. And uh, I also want to point out the guitar that I'm using is a Line 6 Variax uh, 700. This is actually uh, an older model than the ones that are out right now. So the ones that are out right now are the Line 6 uh, James Tyler uh, Variax guitars. And uh, those are pretty similar, but uh, what Line 6 tried to do is, is change it around and kind of answer uh, and, and meet the requests of a lot of the people that own the guitars. So some people complained, hey, these guitars don't have any real pickups. I want some real pickups in my guitars. So the new uh, Line 6 guitars have pickups. They actually have uh, also redone the modeling of the acoustic guitars in the new James Tyler uh, Variaxes. So um, supposedly the, the acoustic models should sound even better than they do on uh, this one, this is a 700 um, from previous generation of their guitars. Uh, you know, I think that there are uh, a lot of good things to like about the the uh, Variax guitars, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't even purchased one of the new ones. Is I really like the old one. Um, it sounds great to me, and uh, I'm happy with it. So uh, I think that these things are. Uh, you can find them online and find them used and pick them up pretty cheaply. And I think for someone that's just recording in a studio like me, I just record in uh, the spare bedroom of my apartment, that uh, these guitars have a lot to offer. You know, I don't have the money to go out and purchase $3,000 Les Paul, $4,000 Martin guitar, and, you know, $2,000 uh, Strat and then go down the list of the Telecaster and all these other different kind of guitars However, when I'm recording I want to get that kind of sound and so rather than going out to my local music store and picking up a Fender Squire uh, Guitar and maybe an Epiphone uh, Les Paul that I can afford maybe the cheaper ones. I Think that uh, actually the Line 6 Variax guitar for being uh, just a single guitar that you can pick up for relatively cheap you can get all those different sounds that are actually really good um, that you can pick those up for a pretty inexpensive price and get all those different kind of flavors. You know, if you want that Rickenbacker kind of 12 string guitar on your recording, you don't have to buy one of those. You don't have to rent it. It's just, you know, one of the things that you have on the guitar. So I highly recommend this guitar specifically, you know, if you don't have an unlimited amount of budget to go out and purchase all those different guitars. This thing's perfect for the studio. I really like it. it you know, you can add in those kind of typical sounds. Like if you really want that Telecaster, because your song calls for it, you're playing a country style 
song or maybe you have a client that comes into your studio and says, hey, I want to get this kind of sound. This guitar has got a lot of sounds that can do a lot of different things, and that's why I like to use it. Uh, you know, it might not be as as good as having all those really nice guitars because it's modeling, it's not the real thing, uh, but for me, it does pretty good, and then I can spend all my money on other gear and stuff like that. So in this video, uh, I'm going to be demonstrating this guitar and how you might record it into Pro Tools, and then how you might mix it. Now, if you guys have seen some of my other videos, I've demonstrated some mixing techniques and recording techniques. Now, this video is going to be different. So if you're not all about the modeling and you say, I don't really care about the modeling, hopefully I'll get some other things in the video that you'll like, specifically when we get into the mixing stage. Another thing I want to uh, discuss is uh, how I'm going to be recording this guitar. So, um, because one specific thing that I think people will want to see in the video, even if, you're, if, even if you don't have a Line 6 guitar or anything like that, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can sync an external device that has a digital out. So that's the SP diff out, the SPDIF output. Uh, how you can set that up inside of Pro Tools. So um, that's a digital signal coming from from one device into uh, Pro Tools. I think that uh, you know if you don't get nothing else out of the video, uh, if you do, if you don't know how to do that, I recommend uh, learning how to do that because uh, transferring the digital signal is going to be better um, for you if you have an external device that has a, uh, the SPDIF output. So check that out later on um, if you're not sure how to do that and, and if you have a device that has that. Um, but before I get to that, let me start discussing uh, the Line 6 Variax guitar. So in some ways, this is very similar to a typical electric guitar. It feels like one. It plays like one. You know, this guitar doesn't have any pickups on it, uh, the typical magnetic pickups, um, but it sits about uh, and feels a lot like kind of like a Stratocaster gun kind of guitar. It's about that kind of weight. It's not as heavy as the Les Paul. Um, and the neck uh, length and everything feels similar to kind of like a Strat. Um, what it has is a uh, bridge pickup. These are it's a piezo pickup. And what it does is the signal from each one of those strings uh, gets picked up separately and then goes to a DSP chip that's inside of the guitar. Now, what that chip does is it does the signal processing on it so that it makes each string sound like the string from a different um, a different uh, instrument. So, right here I have it on uh, one of the settings uh, for an acoustic guitar. Now, how you uh, change the settings uh, is based on these knobs and uh, down here. So, in, there's also a five-way selector that's similar to like a five-way selector on a Fender Strat. So there's a volume knob. I'll play it. You can turn the volume up and down just like that. And then there's a tone knob. The tone knob does some different things um, depending on if you've got an electric guitar model going or an acoustic guitar model. Um, then there's the model selector knob down here. Um, what it does is you switch between the different ones, acoustic to electric to, you know, if you're going for the Les Paul or the Strat or any of those kind of things, you use uh, that knob to select the different models. Then you use the five-way selector. So right now I have it set on the acoustic um, uh, setting. Then you use the five-way selector to switch between the different models. So of the acoustic guitars, right now I have it set on the Martin uh, D, D28 is the model. I want to get that number exactly right, so I got the web page up here. Um, and uh, that's the sound of the Martin guitar that they modeled. The next uh, one is the Martin D28. Uh, it's a 12-string, though. So that's the sound of the 12-string, right? Pretty cool, you know. Every once in a while, I have a song that I want a 12-string guitar on. But I'm not going to go out and purchase a really nice 12-string guitar just for one song. So when I want that sound, though, it's good to have that built into this guitar. I can just call it up. So I like that. This is the 6-string D28. 12-string. The next model 
is another Martin. It's the uh, O18, so this is the smaller uh, style body uh, guitar. Let me play that one. Compare that to the Dreadnought D28. This is the D18 again, or the O18. Next is a Guild uh, F212. Uh, this is another 12 string. So that sounds a little bit different than the Martin 12 string. Back to the Guild. And the last uh, of the acoustic models is the Gibson J200. So this is the jumbo style body, much bigger style body. Compare that to the Dreadnought uh, D28. And the jumbo again. So each one of those sounds is a little bit different. And what I like to do on the songs that I record is actually uh, like mix and match them. I think that the jumbo, uh, the J200, really complements the Dreadnought uh, uh, D28 really well. So what I'll typically do on a song is record both of those doing the same part and then pan one to the right, one to the left. And I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that later on um, so you can hear that. The last thing I want to talk about specifically on the body of the guitar is uh, the tone knob. So for the acoustic models, um, a typical tone knob for an electric guitar, what it does is it applies a low pass filter on the signal, kind of filters off the high end. However, with the tone knob, you wouldn't really want to do that, just filter off the high end of an acoustic guitar. So what, the, what they did with the tone knob is they actually recorded, I guess, two different microphones and then you blend between them. One is a close sound uh, or a microphone that's placed close to the guitar, so it has a, that kind of sound to it. Then another, the other one is the microphone that's further away from the guitar. And so they record that microphone and you can blend between them. I think that's a, a cool way to do it, and I'm glad they did that. Um, so this is the close, uh, the close model, and then I'll roll back the tone and, and switch it over to the uh, microphone that's further away. Uh, and uh, that's really it. Um, so that's the the settings on the guitar. One thing, uh, one other thing I'm going to talk about here, uh, just as far as getting the guitar um, recorded and into your computer into Pro Tools, is uh, on the guitar. There's a typical, uh, there's the standard quarter inch output right here. I'm not actually using that output. Um, and what you can do is just use a standard instrument cable, um, plugs in right there. The cool thing about the Variax guitar is it actually has a digital uh, signal output. Um, and so this is this is a Variax cable, and uh, it's kind of like an Ethernet cable um, for a computer. Um, but I guess it has some special things about it, too, that you have to use the Variax cable. Um, but it does a couple of things. First off, um, there's the digital signal processing that goes on inside of the guitar. So what happens is the uh, the analog signal from the piezo pickup is uh, goes through an analog to digital converter. So when it goes through that analog to digital converter, now it's a digital signal. The DSP chip inside of the guitar will uh, do the processing on on the signals digitally. All right. Then, uh, in order for the signal to come out of the guitar right here through the quarter inch output, uh, that's an analog signal. So in order for the guitar to um, send a signal down there, the uh, signals from the DSP chip have to go through a digital to analog converter uh, in order to go down your standard uh, instrument cable, quarter inch instrument cable. Um, now hypothetically speaking, that instrument cable could be plugged into your uh, interface and you could just record that fine. Uh, however, as soon as that analog signal gets into your interface, it has to go through another analog to digital converter to be recorded inside of your computer. Now, one thing you should know is if you're not familiar with all these things, digital to analog converters, analog to digital converters, 
the thing that's important to know about them is analog to digital and digital to analog converters are not perfect. They're all pretty good, especially the ones, you know, the, in the modern kind of recording interfaces and things like that that you're going to use. They're all really, really good. However, they're, none of them are perfect. So every single time you go through a conversion from digital to analog or analog to digital, you're going to lose just the smallest bit of uh, quality in your signal. And each time you know you have to do that, it kind of adds up. So one thing that I like about the Variax guitar is that as soon as I do that initial analog to digital conversion, I can actually send a digital signal from that point on all the way into Pro Tools and not have to worry about going through any more analog to digital conversions. So that way it's the cleanest signal possible that's going to be recorded inside of Pro Tools. So that's one thing that I really like about this guitar. I use it, I like that for the acoustic models and also I like that for the electric models too. So um, what I'm going to demonstrate though is what you need to do to set up Pro Tools and also uh, set up I'm using a Pod HD 500. What you need to do on that to set it up to get that digital signal without having to do any more conversion between analog to digital. How to get that digital signal into Pro Tools and record it properly. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, switch over and show you how I have the Pod HD 500 set up um, with this guitar. So let me tell you what I've got going on here. This is the Pod HD 500 from Line 6. Um, it's a great effects pedal and amp simulator, um, but I'm not going to be using any of that stuff today. Uh, what I'm going to be using it for, because I'm talking about acoustic guitars, is uh, I have the Line 6 Variax cable plugged into my guitar, and what I'm going to do is have that be plugged into the Pod HD 500, uh, and that's a digital signal that comes in on that cable. Then the Pod HG500 is going to output that signal down the uh, SPDIF cable. And uh, the SPDIF cable, um, it's going to be still be a digital signal. And that cable is going to go into my Pro Tools interface. Um, and uh, then the computer will record that digital signal without having to ever change it from an analog to digital or digital to analog or anything like that, where you would lose... Um, the quality of the signal every time you go through that conversion. So let me describe to you how this is set up. Uh, at the top of the board you see several cords plugged in right there. The one on the far left is the power cord. The second one in is a USB cord. The third one in is the uh, SPDIF cable. And then the fourth one in, uh, the one that's on the furthest to the right, is the Variax cable. So um, I have this set up uh, uh, to record um, because I'm running Pro Tools 8, uh, um, I have to use the uh, Pro Tools hardware. Uh, so that's why I have the SPDIF out. However, if you're running a more recent version of Pro Tools or you're running a different DAW, you can probably just use the USB uh, cord out and use the Pod HD 500 as your interface. Uh, in that sense, you would already be outputting a digital signal um, anyway from the board and your computer will be recording that digital signal from the Pod HD 500 anyway. Um, but uh, hopefully this video will still show you how to, if you have a different interface or effects processor or anything like that, any outboard gear that has the uh, SPDIF um, kind of uh, cables and stuff like that, how you would set that up with Pro Tools. So this is the Pod HD 500 and uh, let me uh, next show you how I've got this uh, set up for um, uh, the controls. Next, let me talk about the settings uh, on the Pod HD 500 so that you can set it up properly so that it will record in Pro Tools. Um, so here I just have a, uh, a default um, preset going on and it actually has some effects and uh, an amp going on. But what I'm going to do is uh, actually switch over to kind of look at the outputs and uh, what I'm looking at here is the uh, SPDIF outputs. And uh, if you look at number one, I've set that as dry inputs. So you can match the outputs. That would be the affected, uh, the wet signal. But if you switch that over to dry inputs, that'll just output the uh, acoustic guitar signal dry uh, and not have any effects on it. 
the next thing you have to set up, um, and this is the case with in, with any of the anything you're using with uh, Spitif, is you have to set up the sample rate based on what you're using in Pro Tools. So in Pro Tools, I'm using a sample rate of 48 uh, kilohertz. Um, if you're using something else, make sure you set your device up so that it has uh, the correct um, sample rate that you're using. And I'll show you what happens later on if you set that up incorrectly. And it's easy to catch uh, if you have the problem. So then there's a level over there. And uh, you can adjust the level with the knob. Um, in, in, uh, I'll show you. You can see in Pro Tools when you're playing uh, the guitar how you would uh, have to have the, the level set up um, properly to get the right um, input level. It's just sort of like a... A typical gain knob anyway that you would use um, on your interface. So those are the settings that you need to be aware of on uh, on uh, the Line 6 um, uh, Pod HD 500 and you would get to those um, by looking at the inputs. Uh, also I had it to have it set up for the uh, Variax input um, so that the input is not just the uh, the quarter inch cable but it also takes in the uh, Variax cable and I have that set up on one and you can look at the output that's uh, down the XLR uh, cables I'm not using that I'm using the SP diff output uh, and that's how I have it set up next I'll move on to Pro Tools and, and show you how you need to have it set up in there uh, to record down the SPDIF cable now let me talk about what you need to do inside of Pro Tools to uh, record uh, the Line 6 Variax guitar. So, as I demonstrated before, we have the uh, Variax cable plugged into the guitar. That cable is uh, then plugged into the Pod HD 500. The Pod HD 500 uh, takes in that Variax cable and it has an output of the uh, SPDIF cable. That SPDIF cable is going into my Digi002 and uh, the then what happens is the uh, did the SPDIF cable from the Digi002 shows up as one of the inputs. So I've got this track right here from my acoustic guitar called the Variax. All right. If you click on the I/O, you'll see for the interface that you have uh, your normal mic and analog inputs. You have ADAT inputs, and then all the way here at the bottom is the SPDIF uh, inputs. Now, uh, for the Pod HD500, it's outputting a stereo signal. Um, so I'm just going to select the left one because uh, it's going to output, when it's a dry signal, uh, the input that I've set up of just the dry guitar with no effects on the pedal going. Uh, whether you select left or right, it will output the same signal. So I set it up as IO uh, SPDIF left. So that will uh, bring the signal in. However, there's also some things that you need to set up um, over here for the hardware that are important. So if you click on the hardware, um, the main one is the clock source. So um, typically, when you're not using it, uh, you're, you're going to have it set on internal. However, some funny things happen if you try and record the digital signal um, through the Pod HD 500 with a uh, SPDIF output. Um, if you have the clock set on internal, you'll notice uh, when you record that it just sounds like something's off, that there's some kind of weird thing going on. So what you want to do is uh, select the SPDIF RCA as your clock source. And uh, what this will do is make sure that the, uh, the sampling, the digital sampling um, going on in the Pod HG500 is the same uh, time as the sampling going on in your Digi002. And you see here also the sample rate is uh, 48 kilohertz. And like I demonstrated before on the Pod HG500, you got to make sure that the uh, sample rate is set correctly. Uh, and on there I had it set up as 48 kilohertz also. Now if you set it up incorrectly uh, on your Pod HG500, or any other device that you use the SPDIF on, um, it has some problems. So let me show you what happens if you have the wrong sample rate. So we're back here at our session. Here's my track, the Variax track, with the SPDIF as the input. I've got it set up. 
I'm going to record on this. And uh, I have everything set up properly now. Uh, so I can play back the guitar and you'll hear it. It's great, right? So that's how you get the uh, acoustic guitar sound from the guitar into the computer as clean as possible. We also see here is uh, there's like no noise going on in the signal. It's ultra clean uh, that you've recorded, and that's because we haven't we 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 haven't ever converted back to analog after we did our initial analog to digital conversion. So what happens is sometimes cables uh, in your studio can pick up some uh, some kind of noise and interference uh, going on. But if you just got a digital signal, you're never going to uh, have the kind of problem of, of that noise being picked up. So that's another advantage um, to recording uh, with a Variax, as the way I've described, is that you will never um, have a lot of uh, a noise floor to your uh, recordings. That if you record all this digitally, you're going to have a very uh, pristine recording if you got a bunch of guitars going on, let's say you have like six uh, tracks of guitars or even more than that, and they all have a noise floor on them, that noise floor is going to start to add up and you got to start putting in a gate and stuff like that. The good thing about the Variax is there is uh, you're recording it clean with no background noise. Now let me show you what happens if I change the sampling rate on the uh, Pod HD 500. And you can think about this. Uh, if you ever have to do this and you run into this problem, what's going on? So let me turn off. I'm muted the record arm. Uh, let me switch over. You'll see what happened. There is, uh, I switched the... Um, I switched the sampling rate on the Pod HD 500 from 48K down to 44.1K. Uh, and uh, what happened is Pro Tools said, hey, this sampling rate is not acceptable. Uh, the clock source um, that you're using the Pod HD 500 is not correct. So um, uh, right now I still have the clock source coming in as the SP diff. Let me show you what happens if I record on the track. It's going to have problems. It's going to immediately... All right, so there we have the problems. So you can see what's going on with the recorded track. So that's terrible. Hopefully it didn't bother you guys too much. I'll stop it immediately. But what happens if you have the sampling rate set up improperly inside of Pro Tools and then coming from the Pod HG 500 is you have that kind of uh, problem. You don't want to record with that, obviously. So let me uh, go ahead and switch back on the hardware to the clock source and then go back on my Pod HG 500 and correctly switch that sampling rate. All right, so I've got it all set up correctly. Um, next, what I'm going to do is uh, you hear it again. It's uh, recording properly. Okay, now uh, the song I'm going to demonstrate for you is the one I've been using before. Um, let me play it back quickly, and you can hear. This is um, in one of my previous videos. I recorded my Martin guitar using a Rode MT2 microphone and also a Fishman Aura. And I showed you how to mix those things, a uh, typical way of mixing. Let me play you back the song and you can hear how it's sounding now. Uh, with that, that's the original guitar. So hopefully that gives you an idea about the kind of song. Uh, now what I've done, let me get rid of this track, is uh, I've gone in already and I've recorded um, two more tracks. Uh, one is with the Martin D28 model on the Variax. 
and the other one is with the uh, Gibson J200 uh, using the Variax. And uh, I've recorded those for the song, and what I'm going to do, similar um, to what I've uh, done with the original um, acoustic guitar, the Martin, that I recorded on my own, is I'm going to mix these, do a couple things differently, uh, and show you how these sound in the mix. Um, the Martin and the Gibson models coming out of the Variax. So right now they're uh, just dry. Um, let me play you these back. I'll mute this one and play you back the two uh, recordings that I've got, and you can hear them. So the one you're listening to here, this is the Martin by itself. And this is the Gibson. That's the jumbo uh, style guitar. So hopefully you guys hear that those, those sound pretty good. Those sound like acoustic guitars, even though I'm recording it with an electric guitar that just has a uh, piezo pickup and a DSP chip inside. Those sound pretty good. Uh, so let's uh, talk about mixing them um, and uh, how you might get them to sound sit better in the mix. So um, previously uh, I've talked about using these kind of special effects, um, the uh, analog kind of virtual console uh, collection is what I've uh, shown you before with acoustic guitars. What I'm going to do on this one is use the Waves NLS uh, plugins. Give you an opportunity to hear some of those for acoustic guitars. So let me start out with the Martin. I'll put this in the middle and I'll just show you some of the different sounds. Uh, I'm using the NLS channel. This, these, uh, this plugin, what it does is it simulates the sound of uh, different kinds of mixing desks. So the first one, the spike one, is an SSL desk. Um, the second one is an EMI desk, that's Mike, and the Nevo one is a Neve uh, desk. What what uh, Waves has done is they've modeled uh, oops, all these uh, different, um, what they've done is they've modeled all these different channels in the desk. So the SSL desk, the EMI desk, these are the different channels. And you can select different ones and uh, kind of uh, add in that analog flavor that the desks uh, are adding. So let me play it back, and you can hear um, how they sound with the Martin guitar when I add in some of that, uh, like, nonlinear kind of harmonics. So first the SSL. Next, the EMI. I actually like the SSL the best, so I'm going to use that one. What you can do is try out some of the different channels too, if you see if there's one that you like that's kind of different. Stick with the twelfth. All right, I'm gonna copy that over to the other one. So this is the J200. We can hear how that sounds now. I'll bypass these, and you can hear the difference. So 
you can hear it's just warming it up a little bit. Um, just doing some subtle things to the signal, and uh, hopefully it sounds better. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, put the Kramer tape uh, plug-in on. Um, I've demonstrated this before in some of my other videos. Um, what I actually like for uh, guitars is to switch the speed setting is the main thing. Switch it from 15 inches per second to 7.5. Uh, turn off the wow and flutter, turn off the noise. That's all I really care about. And then adjust the record level at the input so that it's the right level. Just add a little bit of the flux. That's the tape compression, tape saturation. Copy that over. Make sure it's set up properly. Let me bypass these. So what uh, I hear that's going on is specifically by using that uh, 7.5 inches per second setting. Um, that setting with tape uh, is known to kind of take off uh, some of the harshness of the high end and kind of smooths out the high end. I like that uh, a lot, specifically for guitars. Um, I'm going to do some equalization next. Um, now what that's going to do is uh, kind of increase the high end a little bit, but hopefully what I'm doing throughout the whole process is smoothing out the high end uh, so that it doesn't sound harsh or digital. Um, uh, I guess what I should also do is... Uh, Put on a compressor here. That's my typical order of things I like to do is first uh, add compression then add the EQ. Um, so what would be a good compressor to use that I haven't uh, used recently? Um, I guess maybe what I'll uh, show you is the V-Comp for acoustic guitars. I think this is a, a good one. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. Um, this is the Neve model for it and uh, Start here on the Martin. What you do is you bring up the input level. Uh, I'm going to use a compressor with a low ratio. Fast release for acoustic. Maybe even ultra low. I don't want the analog to be too much. I'm already adding some analog on there. You can see the gain reduction going on. Look at the meter here too to see. Alright, I think that's doing exactly what I wanted to do. Low ratio here, fast release. You can try a de -esser. I'm just going to leave it off. Going to set it up now for the J200. Cool, so that's what, I, what I've got going on. Next thing I want to do is uh, do some equalization. I'm going to do this in two steps. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pull text style EQ. Um, so this is the one from IK Multimedia. Uh, there's different ones from different companies. Um, they're all sort of similar, uh, but the pull, stack, pull text style EQ is uh, a little bit different in the sense that you have boosting and attenuation separate. Uh, actually what I'm going to do here is uh, use attenuation in the low frequencies uh, and boosting in the high frequencies. Um, what I hear uh, that I want to uh, pull out is some of the muddiness in the mid-range of the signal. So that's why I'm setting 
uh, here. I'll play around with the attenuation uh, and pull that out. And I think that the pull text style EQ is perfect for that. It does it in a very smooth way, very gradual way, very musical way um, that I really like for acoustic guitars and even other instruments. So let me play it back and you can hear it. Hopefully you can hear. Typically they're 100 or 60 is what I like. Those are the different frequencies that you're... You can also play around with the bandwidth and see how sharp or how uh, wide uh, the cue you're going to be uh, doing, uh, what that's doing. Um, but that affects both the low and high frequencies. Next, I want to boost around 3 or 4 or 5K. Here, what I've done. Clean it up, added some top in, nice and smooth. Let's do a similar sort of thing for the uh, J200. I might have to try some different settings on that. So I like that 8 kilohertz right there. Let's see what I've done. Really cleaned it up. I like that a lot. started with all right next thing I'm going to show you is the uh, Neve EQs I think that these are awesome for acoustic guitars uh, specifically what I haven't done so far is roll out a lot of the low end and I want to do that here um, Try these different settings and uh, what I'm actually going to do is use the 82, but then come over here with the 100, back that off because I felt like going up to 150 was too much. All right, I want to add in some high end. Maybe there's something I want to pull out in the lower mid range. Yeah, I think I'm going to pull this out. Let's see what I've done. All right.
right, similar sort of thing. Copy it over. Let's hear how this one sounds. So I've got those sounding great on their own. Next thing that I do, I've done this on the other uh, acoustic guitar that I've mixed before, is make a bus. And uh, what I'll do, come over here. At this time, what I'm adding in is the NLS bus. All right, and I'm going to send these two over here. Do a bus, make it uh, 17 and 18. Make this one 17 and 18. This one's actually going to be interface. The, uh, that one, bus 17, 18. I can name this the Variax for the bus. Great. Now let's hear how this sounds. What I'm going to do is bring up the drive. Uh, this is the NLS bus channel. Too much. Start sounding harsh. I like the Neve the best, so I'm going to stick with that one. All right. Maybe add another compressor at this point. Um, what would I like to use? Oh, what I haven't, uh, what I wanted to discuss, that I haven't used before that I love on acoustic guitars is the MV2 from Waves. Uh, and I use it to compress. That's what this high level does, uh, is bring down the high level. But my favorite thing about it is actually to bring up the low end, and I'll show you what that does. Is it actually, um, what it actually does is, is it uh, brings up the sustain in the parts of the signal that will be quieter. Uh, it brings it up, and I think that that's awesome for acoustic guitars and things like lead guitars where the notes sustain for a while. I love to use the MV2 for that. Um, it does a little compression. I add a little bit of compression here, but the main thing that I like to do is bring up that low end using... Uh, this slider and it's kind of unique setting uh, compared to not just a normal compressor uh, what you end up doing so I like that about the MV2 and I'll show you how to use it here Hopefully you can hear when I bypass it, uh, the overall volume, especially kind of like the sustain goes away. And I really like that about this plugin is, is to use it kind of, especially that low level thing where you bring it up uh, for acoustic guitars and stuff like that. I think that's a perfect thing. Just add a little compression or limiting on the, the high end, but then also bring up the low end uh, so you can hear it again. What that's going to be perfect for is making that acoustic guitar cut through because it's always loud, it's always good. Uh, and that's another reason why it's important to record uh, with such a clean level. So that's what's great about the Variax is you don't have that background noise. With the MV2, if you're bringing up that low level, you can bring bringing up noise. But if you record it super clean with the Variax, you don't have to worry about bringing up the, the low level um, and having the problem. So that's I love the MV2 there. Uh, I'm also going to throw on the Oxford Inflator. Because uh, I think it's great for acoustic guitars. I've done it, and I want it, what I'm going to do next is uh, compare the sound of the Variax guitar um, with the one I recorded previously, so you can hear it and uh, see which one you like better.
So that's the very X. Let me uh, switch these in. It's kind of switch back between them, and you can hear what my guitar was sounding like before. Uh, that's just the Martin recorded now that with the very X. Here's the Martin. Now the very X. Now, of course, I've mixed these completely different, um, but the sounds, you know, they uh, don't sound very similar. You can tell a huge difference between the recorded ones of my uh, actual Martin acoustic guitar and then these two uh, other ones uh, from the Variax. So I'm going to quickly label this. Now what I'll do is I'll play back the full song and I'll switch between um, the Variax and the uh, the one that I recorded before, and you can hear the difference. Um, again, what I need to do is uh, make sure that I don't have um, uh, delay compensation going. So if you're unfamiliar with uh, delay compensation, um, check out one of my other videos. I talk about more in more detail then. But what you have to worry about is your processing delay. Um, from your plugins. So some plugins introduce del delay, some don't. Some DAWs automatically take care of it, some don't. Uh, but it's just something you should be aware of uh, when you're mixing. So let me play it back. You can hear the whole song, and uh, then uh, I'll switch between the old mix and the Variax mix. Hopefully you can hear that those, you know, they sound very different. Um, they both, you know, they can sound good for different songs. And they might fit well. Um, so hopefully that gives you guys an idea about the Variax acoustic guitar sounds versus the uh, recording an acoustic guitar in a typical way that you would. Um, you know, I think whatever kind of guitar you record, whether it be a standard acoustic guitar or Variax, um, you know, I recognize and I sympathize with people because I'm trying to buy all the equipment I can afford too, but I don't have an unlimited amount of, my, uh, unlimited amount of money. Um, so you have to just sort of make decisions. All right, you know, I want to buy effects and plugins, but I also want to buy gear like guitars and stuff like that. Uh, what I think is a good thing about the Variax is that um, it's inexpensive at this point. Uh, it kind of like, you know, 
five hundred bucks or so to pick up one of the older generation ones, maybe a thousand bucks to pick up a uh, James Tyler one. That's not too expensive, and you get a lot of great uh, sounds. Acoustic guitar sounds is not even probably what it's known for. It's more known for its modeling of electric guitar sounds. But I think that uh, it has some good things to offer, especially if you're trying to record an acoustic guitar. Maybe you don't have a great acoustic guitar that you can uh, buy, and you can also, you know, maybe you can't buy a nice electric guitar and a nice acoustic guitar. Just getting a Very X might solve both those problems for you. Um, so I think that that's cool about it. Uh, maybe the room that you record in uh, does isn't really conducive for um, uh, recording a nice acoustic guitar. So maybe you have a nice Martin or a nice Taylor or something like that, but the room you record in, every time you record it, it just sounds terrible. Or maybe you have lots of background noise and stuff like that going on uh, that is, it just doesn't work out. So the Very X, uh, you can record without having to mic it or anything like that. Um, you don't have to worry about how nice is my microphone. Do I only have a hundred dollar microphone versus a one thousand dollar microphone? Things like that are uh, all things just to consider when you're uh, when you're uh, you know mixing and stuff like that and trying to determine what gear you're going to use. Um, in another video, I'm going to show you about uh, the very X sounds for the electric guitar. So uh, so far, I've just talked about the acoustic guitar. Another video will be about the electric guitar. Hopefully, you get a chance to hear that and also go into more uh, detail about the Pod HD 500 and all the effects and amp simulation and stuff like that. So I'll play it out at the end. Uh, like what I like to do is um, uh, bring in. Uh, this kind of mastering processing that I've got going on so you can hear what the song would sound like with these acoustic guitars um, in a full mix uh, and just play it out at the end all right so thanks a lot guys for checking out the video hopefully you learned a lot maybe you don't like modeling maybe you do um, but hopefully, you know, you got to hear the Variax. Maybe you haven't had a chance to hear it before and check it out. Um, I'll switch back and forth between the Variax and the acoustic and just play back the song so you can hear it. Uh, till next time, take care, guys.